I was asked by a client if it's possible to update the firmware of uh, Mega2560 via an SD card in the bootloader instead of being connected it physically. The reason was it got a 500 ed units that are about the same setup as you see in front of you. It, it contains an SD card, a wireless communication uh, device, in, my, in this case an 8C06 Bluetooth, in this case it's a Zigbee, but still they're just connected to serial one of the Mega and a Mega-like board. So the first thing I've done was to go and see if somebody's done a similar project, and of course there were. There were. This one is called Microbridge, and it's a USB and an SD card firmware flashing for the Arduino 80 Mega 2560. It's uh, well documented. I had to make one uh, change, which is my client's SD uh, cable select pin is on 8, not 53. Uh, I had to do some assembly changes. And now let's go see how all of this works together. Now let's see the system in action. As you can see here, I'm um, open the serial communication with the board and you can see system started version 2, 2.03 and here it's 2.0. I'm going to send in the big F. I've got some system inside. I'll go over it later. This will initiate the rebooting and the flashing of the new firmware. You can't really see the LED 13 is blinking while the update is being done. Once the update is done, it's going to come back as a version 2.03 and all of this done directly from the SD card. I'm not uploading a new firmware to the, to the board. So we're going to wait for a second. Update done and we are back in version 2.03. Now let's talk about how all of this is working. As I remember, I opened the serial and I pressed F. What happens when I press F, it does this function that's on the firmware, on the existing firmware on the Arduino. And when I do that, I, I, I operate the watchdog with 500 milliseconds. I reset it so it will give me a bit of a second, some uh, debug here. And then I'm setting this EEPROM field to this value. I do a delay and I wait until the watchdog kicks in. This will restart the board and kick the, the firmware, no, sorry, the bootloader into action. Now let's go to the bootloader. What they've done is they took the original bootloader, the STK500 version 2 for the 18 mega, and they made some changes in it. I had some debug, so it'll be easy for me to see what's happening. So you can see the first debug is booting. Uh, you can see when my serial is activated, you can see I'm getting a booting. Now, They've made a state machine here. The first state, zero, is waiting for uh, any serial signal. That's if we're uploading a new software via the IDE. Um, if it is in, in state one, it does all the process. All of this is basically the SDK protocol and goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Now, if it gets to state two, which is the way we want it, uh, you can see I've had debug, I'm writing out two. And then I'm checking if the, I'm reading the EEPROM. The EEPROM is in this value I'm getting here. That means I passed the EEPROM. And now I'm initializing the file system and I'm opening one of the two files, either the framework or the framework, all that's depending on what's the state of the EEPROM. I'll go over this in my next video about uh, a recovery state of this. Now I'm reading the file and it writes it into the memory and then it just goes back uploading itself back with the new firmware. Uh, some problems I had, as I mentioned before, as you can see in here, it does, um, I'm doing assembly here while the original file was doing uh, CBI and uh, SBI on port CS. That didn't work well for uh, pin 8 on the Arduino Mega. So I'm going to leave you with the teaser for my next video. What you're seeing here is no GS here in the console. This is a web web page using IO sockets to connect to the node. And here you're seeing the original output of the, the mega I've shown, I've shown you before. There's another mega involved here which is connected to port 11 directly to the node GS, which basically act as a bridge between those two wireless page over Bluetooth. So now if I do upload, I can send the file and I'm sending it to this server and you can see 
same firewall and you remember the booting to E and F, meaning that we're in state two, that we uh, pass the EEPROM state and that we're having the, uh, the, the file now uploaded. And now it's working and you see it booting back in a second. And we're done. We're back in the same version, but you can see it's a BT1 and not a B. So we actually did update the version.